All right, we have here a demonstration of the three manual coffee method makings of my favorite choice. Um, I'm going to show you that in a minute here. I'm using this grinder right here. It is the Barazza Maestro Plus. It's a conical burr grinder. That, um, it's just a great grinder. So I've got some coffee here. It's a, I think I wrote it down here. It's a decaf dark roast. And it's the water processed decaf, so it's the good stuff. It's from Byerly's. So we're going to start by grinding the beans here. All right, so for this, uh, for the first arrow press that I've got all set up right here, I'm going to use the finest grind that I can. It's pretty much an espresso grind. So I don't know it's probably enough beans ground here. Let's we'll see what we've got as our result. It's a uh, it's a fine grind there. Just gonna do a little bit in here just as a demonstration. So take this and uh, just I just take it and go ahead and pour it right in the arrow press here. Get it all in there. You can hear in the background that my water's boiling. So what I do with this way of making the arrow press is I have it flipped upside down and uh, just add the water right in there. So, as you can see, uh, grounds are down in there. Just making a little tiny bit, so, with these different methods. So, just got a few grounds down in there. And then I've got the filter cap right here. And uh, these things are great because what you can do with them is, uh, you can tell this one isn't a new one. Uh, you can reuse these. I just rinse them off in the sink and let them dry out. So. You don't need to buy that metal thing that's $30 that goes in here. These paper ones you can get about 10 or 12 uses out of. So, um, got the water, we got the kettle back here. We've got it to a boil, so I'm going to take it off of a boil. And, uh, usually I take it and just give it about 5, 10 seconds or so. I don't know if we're totally at a boil or not. So, there we go. So, give it just a few seconds, and then I'll uh, pour some water in here. Don't need that much, since I just got a little bit of grounds. And then I always take this and stir it up really good. They give you this nice little stir stick that you can just rinse off in the sink pretty easily. Alright, so give it a few minutes here. Well, not that much. So you just take that and pop it on. And now it's brewing. What you do with the AeroPress that I like is it's kind of like making a really strong shot of coffee. You put it on your cup and then what you do is um, you've got a really almost a concentrate that you're making. And I've got this nice uh, camping mug here that's really sturdy and fits this well. And so you've got this uh, basically this strong sludge. And you can either just drink it if you just want a little zap of something strong. Or you basically make an Americano. And you'll just add a little bit extra hot water in there. So give it a, give it a minute or so. Then come back to it. Then you take it and I just take it and flip it over. And I mean, it starts coming out right away. But there's your arrow press here. You take it, just press it down. Let's see if we can do this one handed. It doesn't need to be fast. Alright, so there, you've got your arrow press. And that's, that's all you do. Clean up is a snap with the arrow press. Um, you just, you take off the filter part, you rinse this out in your sink, and uh, you take your grounds and you just pop them out, and it pretty much cleans the chamber as you go. You can see there's no coffee in there. So, pretty slick. Really like the AeroPress. I love it for camping in particular. It's all plastic, so easy cleanup. So that's AeroPress. Let's look at our cup of coffee. Not too strong, I didn't put it in a lot of grounds, so it's just kind of a sample, but um, 
Good stuff. I'm going to have a sip here. All right, the next method we have here is the Chemex method. Um, it's basically just your just a fancy pour-over way of doing coffee. My dad used to have this plastic thing when I was a kid growing up that he would just set on top of a mug and he'd put a filter in, like one of these filters. And uh, this is just a very elegant looking device here, as you can see. Um, it's just kind of beautiful the way that it's made. You can see right here that there's like a, a pour channel right here, which is, um, it's actually kind of handy, but it's got like leather here and wood bead. And uh, this is all a wood. It's two pieces that's kind of pressed together. Um, this is the six cup Chemex pot. And I believe that that makes it 50 ounces. They go with a, they call a cup, 5 ounces. Which I don't understand why they do that. But anyways, so what I'm going to do for the first part here is uh, with the Chemex, I'm going to take it over and uh, set it right here next to the grinder. For the grind, I like to do a, a fairly coarse grind here. So I'm going to crank this on over. It's not very bright, but... Um, I'm going to do more of a coarse grind. Not as coarse uh, as French press, but a bit coarser. More of a medium grind-ish. So, go ahead and give that a whirl. Oh, that's all, our, all the coffee. Makes that noise when you're done. So, you can see the grind a little bit here. Um, definitely more of a coarse grind than that last, that last bit. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well. But yeah, that's the uh, the grind I use for this. Seems to work pretty well. Um, the first thing that I do is actually, you could do your hot water kettle in this, but for the sake of simplicity, um, I take the paper filter and just kind of rinse it off. And these paper filters I'm using are not actual Chemex filters, and so some of you will probably think, oh no, he's not using the right this properly. So this is really hard to do with one hand. <laughs> I need a, a, a camera tripod or something for this procedure, but I don't know. Just kind of the idea is to rinse it out. Hopefully what it does is get some of that paper taste off. So take your rinsed off filter, toss it in your Chemex spot. Again, this is just a regular number four filter. Um, you can tell it wasn't designed for this, but um, it seems to work pretty well. I don't know, it's cheaper. So I'll probably get some Chemex filters eventually as I can find them. They were out when I bought the Chemex, so take that. Um, take your coffee. It's in here. It's lovely. You can't smell it, but man, it smells good. Um, put it down in the center. And we've got our water to a boil again. What you do for this is you let the coffee bloom. So um, I'm going to take my kettle here and just wet the grounds. So I probably did a little bit too much there, but that's all right. Take it, and then I get a spoon handy. Just kind of make sure all the grounds are wet here. So you can see that it's already dripping through here. But what this does is just allows the grounds to open up. I'm trying to keep all the grounds down. I'm going to leave the spoon right here just for the ease of one-handed use here. Um, then after you've done that, you just wait a little bit, and then you can pour the rest of your water in. And I'm not going to make a ton here, so I'm just going to fill it up to, say, about right there. Whoa! You know, it's done that to me a couple times, and it looks like I've got grounds in my coffee. So, it looks like it probably blew through, which, yeah, it totally did. So here's why you should buy a Chemex filter, because um, that'll happen. <laughs> I'm learning my lesson here. So I have a, a delicious pot of coffee that has lots of grounds in it. That was kind of a failure, but you can basically see the idea of Chemex here is uh, what what normally would have happened is this would have gone down slower. And you try and keep the grounds like I scoop them down and constantly stirring while you're making your Chemex. Um, it's beautiful when that doesn't happen. This was kind of a fail of a video, but. When that doesn't happen, it's a it's a wonderful process. So you just take the paper filter out, which I'll actually do right now. And I've got the trash down here. You just pop your trash can out. You take your paper filter like this, which is quite easy. And uh, you just toss it. And there's your coffee. 
it's pretty slick. Um, the cleanup on this is, is is nice. Probably not quite as nice as the French press. Ah, sorry, the Aero press. The French press is probably the worst cleanup. Um, this is probably this is all right. You got to rinse out the pot a little bit when you're done. I usually don't. Um, I don't do a whole lot of cleaning this regularly. So, makes really good coffee. I think there's something about the paper filter that, um, I don't know, I personally really like the coffee that goes through paper filters. So, you get that with the, uh, this little paper filter, too, from the uh, AeroPress, which I've drawn off down there. So, that's the Chemex pot. Last but certainly not least is the French press. This guy right here is what, what really sold me on making coffee the manual way. Um, I obviously, I enjoyed this guy back here. You can see that. It's a Seiko Aroma, and that's the espresso maker, but that's the only automatic coffee maker that I have in my house. Um, I love this guy, the Seiko Aroma. It uses a pressurized portafilter, filter, so <laughs> you can screw up your grind completely, and it'll blast right through it. So it's very forgiving. Um, and it's just kind of, you can see it next to the toaster. Not huge. Uh, it's a little bit deeper than it can really get a good shot of right here. But uh, it's a great little espresso machine. I really highly recommend it. So if you're going to have an automatic coffee maker, this is, this is all you need. The rest you can have is manual. So this guy right here is what sold me on manual coffee. Love it. Very, very simple. As you can see right here, it's got a stainless filter. So this is of the three that I'm showing. This is the only one that has um, not a paper filter. The nice thing about this is there's no filters to buy. There's nothing to replace. Eventually, this thing can get so gummed up that you can chuck it and replace it. But I've never had that happen. I, you can pull it apart and take all the pieces out separately. This is like a screw part right in there. So it unscrews from there. Um, it's a little messy, though. That's probably what I don't like about it the most. Um, the other big thing that I just learned with the French press, and I just made my first batch last week, was you can use this as a cold press. Uh, you use just an insane, you use like 12 cups of, 12 scoops, sorry, not cups, 12 scoops, um, the big coffee scoop, of your very, very coarse ground coffee in here. And then you fill the rest of the way up with water and put the, you put this in keep the coffee down a little bit plunge it maybe to like right there you need a tall fridge space to do this and then you set it in the fridge for 24 hours um, once you take it out you obviously you do the press you won't you won't get it down past probably here because there'll be so much coffee in there and you pour this again it's almost like a concentrate you pour your concentrate out and then it's about 50 50 I found you uh, you take your concentrate whatever you poured it into then you uh, go half again as much water. So that makes a really good cold press, I found. So nothing else in the house can do do a cold press. The Chemex, which you see down here, and the, the AeroPress, which we both looked at, those already, those are not going to do any type of a cold press at all. So at least I can't think of a way where they would. Um, and it would be a lot of work and a lot of waiting for a very little amount if you did try and do it in the AeroPress. So this is really always like standard to have one of these around. Love it. The thing with this guy is your grind. Um, I've already done this, but I've notched it all the way over to the coarsest grind that I have. The settings on the Baratza Maestro Plus, they go from 0 to 40. So for the AeroPress, I used a 0. Um, for the Chemex, I think I used about a 30. And for the French press, I'm going to use a 40. So it's going to be a real nice coarse grind. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, now it looks like, let's see, did I kill the uh, power breaker here? Well, so I'm going to grind that and then we'll get back to the video here. All right, so here's our grind for the this coarse grind. This is as coarse as she'll get here. Um, which I think is a, it's a pretty coarse grind. It almost looks like there's a whole bean chunk in there. So this is kind of what it looks like. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not 
like there's half of bean chunks in there or anything, but it's a good coarse grind. You can you can see, kind of, I'll pour it in here, and get a better idea of how coarse it is. So um, here we go. There's our uh, there's our coarse grind in there. So nice and loose and chunky. So really, all you do with a French press, and this is the beauty of it all, is you take your uh, your hot water and you got your French press, and you really just quite literally pour it in there. And I'm just gonna again make a little bit, so I'm just gonna go with that. And so the coffee and the water is just kind of floating in there. It's kind of in some ways similar to cupping, which cupping is where you take a, a really super fine grind and you you take your uh, coffee cup like this and you just put it in there and stir it with hot water and you might have a little chunky last swallow but um, cupping is the most natural way to drink coffee there's no filters there's no process really at all other than grinding so this uh this process is in some ways a little similar to that i guess not quite though because what you do is uh one of the things i always like to do is take a, a stir stick and stir it up really good and one of my favorite parts about the French press is once it stops swirling, you get a kind of a a foamy type of a feel to the top of your cup. And as you can see, you get grounds that come up on the sides when you're stirring. So you let it sit for a little while. I don't ever know. I always get impatient and just end up doing it. So um, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to go ahead and press it. So you just take this and push it down and viola, your coffee is done and made. So you just take it and uh, find your, your cup that you're using and just pour it in. You should have yourself a pretty kick butt cup, cup of coffee. Um, the thing that stinks, I guess, about this, and I'll show you, is, is your cleanup. This is my sink here. And um, so for cleanup, I've got the AeroPress stirrer. I just kind of really like that. It was handy. So, I mean, you got this mess here that you have to deal with. And uh, this, like, coffee sludge water. And it's a coarse grind, so it doesn't go down the drain super well. So, it will, though. So, <laughs> I don't know if it's probably the best for my pipes, per se. But I'm just going to go ahead and rinse it all off. So, again, that's kind of uh, really the only downfall, I think, with French press. The other thing, too, is... The way they design these containers, it's a glass, um, it's a glass thing inside of a plastic, and you'll get like chunks of coffee. You can't really see it right now because I cleaned it out pretty well last time, but you'll get them like right in between this area. So you can get uh, stainless double-walled um, French presses, especially at REI, and I'd recommend those. Actually, I think they're probably a lot better than the glass. The glass. The one thing is that it tends to lose heat. One of the things that I learned from a buddy of mine to keep the heat in is you take your kitchen towel, if, you know, this is just your coffee sitting in here that you're drinking, and you can kind of poke it through the handle here. And Again, this is hard to do one-handed, but you can just take your kitchen towel and kind of wrap it around here, try and insulate your, your French press. It's not very beautiful, but... Yeah, I, re I recommend those insulated French presses. That's probably the one other downfall of this. But actually, all of these methods, there's not really a good way to keep the coffee hot. So put it in a good insulated mug, like uh, my trusty REI camping mug here. You can't even see the brand on it. It's been worn off. So I love this mug. It's got a great top. And it was a super cheap mug. So oops, here's the top right here. It's just one of the, these styles, and it just pushes down. Good insulated mug keeps the heat in. Pretty important to have when drinking coffee. Um, so yeah, of these three methods of the, I've got them right here: the Chemex, the AeroPress, and the French press, and all that dirty coffee down there. Um, I still don't know which one I like the best. The French press seems to be able to do the most. Um, the AeroPress gives me like an espresso, really, if I want it or something very close to one. And the Chemex is just purely beautiful. I think I'm really drawn to the Chemex just because aesthetics, uh, it's just a beautiful way to make coffee. It looks like you're doing a lab experiment. So 
these are the three manual methods of making coffee. There's subtle other variations to these methods, but these are kind of like your, your three main ways of doing a manual coffee. And then I talked about cupping a little bit too, um, which is probably the purest, simplest, most natural form of making coffee. It's like making a cup of hot chocolate. And then there's also the cold press, and I talked a little bit about that too. And uh, I don't know. I think important to have a, a good bean grinder. I really, really can't emphasize that enough. You can't really do all of this, all of these methods, without just buying oodles of coffee um, if you don't have a good bean grinder. Because part of, partly what that lets you do is use these different methods of making coffee. Otherwise, you'd have to buy all really fine espresso grind. Um, you'd have to have some regular grind. You'd want some coarse grind. And you just end up with a lot of coffee. A lot easier just to buy a bag of beans. And then get yourself a nice burr grinder. And just go to, go, go to town on it. Um, I just got this as a Valentine's Day present for my wife. It's from William Sonoma. It's, it's, a, it's very pretty. It has a little spoon on the side here. And I like it. I have some caribou. Let's see, what was it? Reindeer blend. It was actually also it was from Christmas. So sitting down in there. It smells just great. It's kind of a cool little container. It's got the, the rubber seal right here. Keeps it fresh. So looks kind of fun. Um, all right, that's all we got.